friends so we'll in this session we'll study a uh, joule thompson effect so this joule and thompson both uh, they have observed that when a real gas at a certain pressure it ex expands adiabatically through a porous plug a plug which is a uh, porous in nature or a fine hole into a region of low pressure means high pressure to low pressure and it is accompanied by cooling except for hydrogen helium these two gases is not following the rule because it will get warmed up but other gas will get cooled and this phenomenon is known as the joule thompson you can see this uh, diagram this is the insulated tubes so this is a piston which is frictionless and uh, massless so when you uh, this is a v1 volume when you put this to this end so there will be some pressure created at constant temperature some temperature t1 this is the porous plug so on passing the gas will pass this side slowly, slowly. one uh, this is also there that this is the frictional piston so this will shift to this one this side because volume will be little bit increased here and this will get again new pressure p2 and t2 but what happens in this cases pressure of this one is should be greater than p2 the left side is the right side so this has more pressure this has less pressure so in this case what, what happens so by applying pressure on the piston on the left side slowly slowly we have to apply enough so as to not the change p1 very slow pressure so what happens a volume of gas equal to v1 a volume of gas equal to v1 like this v1 is force slowly through the porous plug and allowed to expand to the pressure p2 and this is here the expanding so volume v2 by moving the piston and volume v2 is by moving the piston on the right onward so definitely it becomes your volume v2 so this one volume has been expanded so when the process being carried out as above the temperature of the two sides of the porous plug is recorded accurately then we will measure the these two temperature separately initial temperature and final temperature the experiment is repeated with different gases and it is observed that a falling temperature will take place in cases in case of all gases except hydrogen so in these two cases there is no falling temperature they will warm up but in all other gases there is falling temperature so definitely this is low pressure high pressure so when you uh, compare this gas so there is a little expanded volume so uh, pressure will decrease down obviously and this gas becomes cooled so when the experiments are carried out at ordinary temperature that is room temperature the pressure is adiabatic because this is the insulated tubes so heat cannot pass out so this is adiabatic so by using the first law delta u is equal to q plus w so delta u will be equal to w w means work done so thus work done during expansion of gas under adiabatic conditions is actually at the cost of internal energy that is internal energy decreases then temperature also decreases in fact a part of this internal energy is used up this internal energy is used up to overcome the forces of attraction which is existing among the molecules so what is the force of attraction this force of attraction actually the wonderful forces so this is a porous plug so this side is work done this side is work done but this side is work done is on the system p1 v1 and second is the t1 and this side is work done work is done by the system so this is minus p2 so here work done is negative this side is work done is positive net work done by the system is p uh, w equal to p1 v1 by p2 v2 this is net work done so this is the negative this is the positive delta u is equal to work done because q is zero because q is zero it is an adiabatic process so p1 v1 equal to minus p2 v2 so this can be written as a u2 minus u1 is equal to p1 v1 minus p2 v2 so we can write p2v2 this side and u1 this side so u2 plus p2v2 equal to p1 v1 plus u1 so this is nothing but the h2 is h1 so this we can write h2 minus h1 is nothing but the delta h which is equal to zero so thus it leads to a conclusion that when the expansion of gas takes place adiabatically through a porous plug of a fine hole then enthalpy of the system remains constant because this is, there is no change in enthalpy it is always constant thus uh, this joule and thomson expansion of a real gas for a real gas it occurs not with constant internal energy but with also constant enthalpy so internal energy also constant and enthalpy also constant so this is called as the isoenthalpic process 
and we know that h is a state function so this delta h is having complete differentiation it will go complete the differentiation so h is the function of pressure and time so we can write dh is equal to uh, delta h by delta p at constant temperature into dp plus delta h by delta t at constant pressure into dt so this is the one expression of the integration complete differential and this also we know that delta h by delta p is equal to cp so we can uh, substitute this value cp over here so delta h by delta p at constant temperature dp plus cp into dt and on adiabatic temperature this is zero so this becomes zero so we this is equal to this value or we can write dt by dp so if you take dt by dp means dividing you taking this side and dividing so you will get delta h by delta p is equal to cp so this is nothing but the this is called the joule thomson coefficient that is mu j t mu j t or this is mu j t this quantity is equal to this much value hence it is defined the temperature change in degree produced by a drop of one atmospheric pressure a drop of one atmospheric pressure when the gas expands under condition of constant enthalpy means delta h is zero and delta u is zero so whatever temperature take place is this one so for cooling mu is that is mu j t is positive why because delta t and delta p dp and dt both are negative means this is also negative this is also negative delta p is always negative why because uh, p2 is lesser than p1 so this will be always negative then if delta t is negative then negative is positive so it will cooling will take place for heating if delta t is positive if dt is positive then dp will be negative so mu j t will be a joule uh, thomson coefficient will be negative then at that time heating will take place if mu is zero then gas neither heated up or nor cooled on adiabatic expansion why because it is zero and delta t is also zero for any value of dp for ideal gas so this gas will be your ideal where no heating takes place no cooling takes place on adiabatic expansion but this gas will be your real gas where mu j t will be positive mu j t will be your negative inversion temperature ti so every gas has a definite temperature at a particular pressure at which mu j t is equal to zero so we are calculating for the ideal gas mu j t usually only happens when the gas is ideal and below this temperature mu j t will be positive and above this temperature mu j t will be negative that we have seen it and this temperature at a particular pressure at which mu j t is equal to zero that is the gas neither cools down nor heats up the heats up upon adiabatic expansion is called as the inversion temperature so this is temperature at this when mu j t is equal to zero so it is a characteristics of a gas so for every gas inversion temperature is different hydrogen and helium which at room temperature show heating effect also show a cooling effect when joule thomson experiment is carried out at a temperature below this inversion temperature let us calculate the mu j t and inversion temperature of the van der waal gas so one of one of van der waal gas is written as b plus ab by v square into v minus b equal to rt so expand it multiply v into this and b into this one so you will get this equation when pressure is not too large then this term ab by v square this term will be ignored when pressure is not large means volume is very high so we can ignore this value so we can write in this form P, pv plus a by v minus pb equal to rt or pv equal to rt plus pb minus a by v is 1 and if you divide by p so you will get this equation and again for ideal gas pv is equal to rt so in place of uh, this one p into v we can write rt so this is this equation and uh, in place of pv we can write rt so rt by p minus a by rt plus p so we are writing to get our answer easily on differentiality with respect to t at constant pressure we will get delta b upon delta t uh, at constant pressure will be r by p t is cancelled and this becomes your minus minus a by rt this is your zero so r by p plus a by rt square so again rearranging equation one so if you rearranging this one equation one pv equal to rt plus pv a by b so you take rt and whole equation this side 
So if you uh, put whole equation this side, you will get RT equal to P into V minus P plus AP by RT. So you will get again equation 4. So replacing question 1 A by, A by V equal to AP by RT, we can rearranging, we will get this much value. Now divide this whole value by PT. So if you divide PT, so you will get R by P, so TT cancel, this becomes your V by B by T and this becomes your A by RT square. Again equation 5. Now substituting equation 5 in equation 3. So what is equation 3? See here. So equation 3 is this one. This is equation 3. This is equation 5. So this value we have to put in 3. R by P. So this is this value. So if you substitute this value over here, you will get this equation. So delta B, uh, delta V by delta T at constant pressure is equal to this whole value is nothing but the R by P and this is the A by RT square. So this is 2a by rt square and again multiplying by t so you will get this much value and if you subtract this side so this whole 2a minus b is 6 equation. Now by thermodynamic relation v is equal to t into dv by dt at constant pressure plus delta h by delta t is equal to p this is a thermodynamic relationship. So equation 6 can be written as the, this one so instead of this v value this is the given value this is the given value and you substitute this value into the here so on substituting this value this side so you will get t delta v by delta d at constant pressure minus this whole value this side equal to 2a by rt minus p so again minus delta d by rt keep outside this will be cancelled so this will equal to 2a by rt minus p is equation number 8 so mu jt is actually this is let's say we already derived that is delta t by delta p at constant h enthalpy is equal to delta h by delta p by at constant p is multiplied by 1 by c although we have derived in previous let me show you so if you remember we have derived this equation this is, so this is same equation over here same equation so we can write delta t by uh, dp at constant pressure will be 1 by cp because this will be positive and this will be your 2a by rt minus b so this is equal to this much as c so this is the equation number 9 so we can see mu jt this is the mu jt is actually depends upon the cp a b and r and t this whole four five quantities and all other quantities except are constants for a gas, therefore, mu jelly depends only upon the temperature of the constant. Okay, so if you make all constant, then it will depend on temperature. So at low temperature, when 2A by RT involving the attractive forces between the molecules predominates, then we can write 2A by RT is greater than B, then mu jelly will be your positive. At high temperature, when 2A by RT is lesser than B value, then mu jelly is negative. For hydrogen helium, A is very small, so 2A by RT at ordinary temperature means the temperature which is below than much below than 0 degree centigrade is less than B and so a heating effect is observed in Joule Thompson experiment. If these gases are first cooled to temperature below inversion temperature and allowed to expand adiabatically when you are expanding these gases below uh, inversion temperature adiabatically then these gases will show the cooling effect. Which, which gases? That hydrogen helium. If you are heating, if you are expanding below the inversion temperature after cooling, then it will show the cooling effect. So at inversion temperature, that is T equal to inversion temperature, mu jet is equal to 0. So 2A by RT inversion temperature is minus P equal to 0. So we can write inversion temperature equal to 2A upon RB. Now we we'll see some numericals. Calculate the inversion temperature of the hydrogen gas. A is given this much value, value and B is given this much value. So Ti equal to 2A by Rb. 2 is given, A is given, R is given, B is given. So you will get 216.8 Kelvin that is minus 56 degree centigrade. Explain why mu jt of a ideal gas is 0. Why it is 0? Already we have explained. Let us see once again. An ideal gas undergoes neither cooling nor heating on adiabatic expansion in Joule Thompson experiment. Why? Because the intermolecular force of attraction, that is the Van der Waal forces, often in an ideal gas are negligible. This gas is negligible, so 
no energy is used up in overcoming the force of attraction when the gas expands adiabatically and thus internal energy of the gas does not fall and temperature does not fall it is remain constant there is no expansion take place second prove that del e by del v at constant temperature is equal to zero that is internal energy this is delta e is nothing but the internal energy so better you write delta u then it does not necessarily follow the this one enthalpy equal to zero let us see h is equal to u plus pv and delta h is equal to uh, delta u by delta v at constant temperature and this becomes your dpv by dt so differentiation now if this del u by del v at constant temperature is zero but then then del h by delta v at constant temperature is equal to whole value at constant temperature definitely if this is zero this is equal to this one this is zero now del pv by del uh, del, uh, del b at constant temperature is equal to zero so this becomes also zero only only this is possible this is equal to zero when pv at temperature is constant that is gas is ideal Means if this is zero this becomes zero this is equal to zero, and this becomes zero at constant temperature so this will also become zero and this is also po only possible when gas is ideal and hence del h by delta v at constant temperature becomes zero only if the gas is ideal condition so if the gas is ideal condition then the delta h by delta v is also zero this is also zero and work done also zero. there is no work done in case of ideal gas condition